these, these three licenses uh, you can largely view as a continuum. Um, there's been a number of different articles and white papers and lots of books written about open source licensing over the years. Um, one, of, one of which actually um, talks about, uh, this is a one from Sun that was written by a guy named Simon Phipps uh, that was, talks about you know, trading off developer freedom versus, well, he, I think he called it com community development. Um, and he, he categorized, he, he very carefully categorized um, the three license groups into category A, that being the BSD style, um, category B, I think it was, which is sort of the EPL, MPL, LGPL style licenses, and then category C, um, which would be the, the GPL license. And if you read the white paper, he's very carefully um, categorized these three licenses and he said, you know, he picked these three categories very specifically to have, you know, non-inflammatory language and then he kind of blows it by referring to them as the give me credit, give me everything, um, give, what was the other one, give me, um, give me changes, so give me credit, give me changes, give me everything. Um, was the way he sort of, then he could have sort of, sort of exposed how he really felt about the, about the three licenses. Um, and, and, you know, the other, um, another one I've read is, you know, Sam Ruby uh, m made the crack that the BSD license is the universal donor and the GPL is the universal recipient. I'm not sure exactly sure what that makes the EPL, but uh, um, again, those are another ways, those are very simplistic ways to, uh, to, th to think about these, uh, these licenses. Um, so some um, uh, key points on uh, the EPL itself. Um, and before we can really talk about the merits of the EPL, it's important to understand some of the, uh, some of the things um, about the license. Um, so the first, the first thing I want to mention about the Eclipse Public License, uh, because there's, I've seen this uh, time and time again, um, that people get it wrong and assume that the EPL is very much like the Apache license, uh, which is in turn, by the way, very much similar to the BSD license uh, that, that Dave would be uh, arguing for. Um, but the, the EPL actually is a copyleft license. Um, so it, um, it's what uh, is sometimes referred to as a weak copyleft license to, to differentiate it from the GPL. All right, so what does that term mean? Um, it was, first of all, the copyleft, uh, the term copyleft was coined by uh, Richard Stallman a lot of years ago when he first uh, drafted the GPL. And the, um, the idea behind copyleft is, uh, is a basically a licensing promise that if you take some software uh, under such a license and you make changes to that software, or, or the legal term uh, is create derivative works of, um, actually, actually, as an aside, one of my favorite all-time quotes about open source was from a woman named Denise Cooper who said that when they started the open source movement years ago, they were hoping to get rid of the lawyers and instead we've all turned into lawyers. Um, <laughs> so it's you know, kind of ironic that you have you know, three guys here that aren't lawyers that are going to be debating some of the finest nuances of, uh, of uh, copyright law in, that you can imagine. Um, but anyways, the, the copyleft notion is that is a promise that if you create a derivative work of a piece of software that you in turn cr uh, donate back that derivative work under the same license terms. So if you take a piece of EPL license code and you make enhancements or modifications to it, um, you have to uh, contribute those enhancements back un to the community under the EPL. Um, and so that's a, a sort of a trade-off between um, s the, freedom to th the freedom to use the software for free, um, but making those contributions and enhancements back to the platform. Um, but where the EPL uh, is largely different from the GPL is that uh, if you make the, uh, if you build something yourself which is on top of the EPL code, you are free to do, to license that code under any license you want, as long as it's at least more or less consistent with the EPL. Uh, particularly, you're free to take the work that you do on top of the Eclipse Public License and commercially license that. And in, in addition to that, you are free to take the EPL code, uh, source code, compile it into binaries and commercially license that. So what you see is a lot of commercially licensed software which is built on top of EPL code. Um, just a couple of examples. Um, oh, the, the easiest one is uh, basically the entire IBM Rational product line uh, is built on top of Eclipse. 
Um, Web, WebSphere uh, is built on top of Eclipse Equinox. Um, so there's lots and lots of uh, commercial examples. Uh, I could go on Oracle and WebLogic and, and so SAP, for example, also does the same sort of thing. Um, so that's, that's one of the, 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 key, the key things to understand about the Eclipse license. It strikes this balance between um, providing back to the community but also being able to commercially utilize the results. Um, another key point about the Eclipse license is that um, it's actually written, that one of the design points for the license is that it's written as a legal document. Um, it's actually written, the design point was to read, write a license, an open source license, that you could hand to a normal lawyer of normal competence and expect them to understand it. Um, you know, I'd like to contrast that to the LGPL, for example, as, I consider, as, as an example of uh, a document that I consider the only thing I've ever read that would have been shorter if it had actually been written by a lawyer, um, which is actually, you know, <laughs> extremely faint praise. Um, as I said, uh, you know, so a lot of it is around encouraging commercial distribution with the EPL. And one other key point is that the, the EPL has a patent license. Now, I have all kinds of um, nuanced feelings about software patents, um, but suffice it to say that if you want to commercially uh, use uh, software, having a patent license is a, is a, big, uh, a big benefit um, for companies that want to commercially use, use software. So a patent license is actually important. Um, and it's, EPL has seen uh, a lot of adoption over the last couple of years. Originally, of course, it came from the Eclipse Foundation, um, which I'm part of. Uh, more recently, the Symbian Foundation, which is spun out of Nokia, has adopted the Eclipse public license. Um, there's an open health tools organization in the U.S. that, uh, that is, is using it. Uh, Topcase, which is an organization uh, run by Airbus uh, in France, is using it. So they're seeing and, uh, a lot of EU-funded um, government research projects in, the, in Europe are also using it. So it's actually seen very broad adoption over the last couple of years. Um, one of the key points, and this is sort of like moving into why I think uh, e e the Eclipse license is the better license, is the thing to remember about software licenses is you can talk about, and Phipps did this in his, his white paper, talking about developers and talking about communities, but in the end, follow the money. Right? A lot of this is about business and how, what, what are the business models that can, that, um, can result from licensing decisions. And <clears throat> um, every single license choice you make um, has very important business implications. And if there's anything, you know, whether you're in the room or, or watching over the net, um, if there's one key message that I want you to understand is that if you are starting a, an open source business or you're getting involved in open source, it is absolutely key that you understand what the business trade-offs are um, that are going to result from your licensing choices because business models largely follow licensing choices um, and making uninformed licensing choices will result in uninformed business models which usually results in bankruptcy. Um, and that's uh, not a path that very many people want to follow. Um, the other thing, just by the way, in sort of um, exposing things is that um, it's really important to remember that all of these licenses have had business successes. Um, the Eclipse license has had enormous business success. The GPL with you know, MySQL being sold for, what was it, a billion dollars is obviously a success. Um, a, not a BSD, but Apache Spring Source just sold for a couple of hundred million to VMware, so that's actually doing very well. Um, and it really boils down to what is the business model you want to build, what is the community you want to build, and what is the ecosystem around uh, your business that you want to build. Those are fundamentally the choices that you're making when you pick your license. Um, and I think the EPL strikes the, an excellent balance between the choices that you have, and um, that's really why I would say that it's the best choice.